Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Caverna the K Farmers, or as it could also be called, quite rightly, Agricola 2 Cave Dwarves, or something like that, um, because this is, in all senses of the word, a pure, straight up sequel to Agricola. They don't call it that, but this is basically Agricola 2. And I mean that kind of in a video game way. You know how, if you're playing Call of Duty 6, you know what you're getting. You're basically getting, you know, uh, an updated version of the Call of Duty franchise. If you've played Call of Duty 5, you know what Call of Duty 6 is, or, you know, pick any franchise. You know, they add some new content, they tweak the formula, they add some new feature, and that's exactly what this is. This is Agricola with some content tweaked, some new features added, but at its heart, it is the core game that you already know. So, I'm just gonna jump right into it and start playing, although actually, a couple of quick caveats before I jump in. First of all, I'm going to be doing a two-player, as I always do, and more importantly, I'm going to be playing what's called the introductory version. If you liken it to Agricola, it's kind of like the family version, which means everything's a little bit simpler. And now there's a couple reasons I'm doing that. One, this is a big, complicated game, and I barely know how to play it. I've hardly played it at all, but you know, it's just after S, and I just got home. I know people really want to see a video of it, so I'm just going to bang one out, and so I'm going to try and keep things a little bit simpler for myself by doing the introductory version. Um, now, don't worry. You'll still see all the features, all the new stuff. It's just that in the introductory version, there are only, I, what is this? I think this is like uh, 25 or so, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, There are only 27 tiles that you can choose from to improve the quality of your homestead. In the advanced version, there's double that many. There's twice as many, or just shy of twice as many tiles. Uh, and those ones get really complex, a lot of interesting, you know, interplay and combinatorial abilities. So the core game I'm definitely going to demonstrate, it's just I won't be showing some of the more advanced tiles. Now, the other reason I'm doing this is because I was actually, uh, this is a coordinated video. There's another video blogger out there, you know, uh, who covers board games, does run-throughs like me. You may have heard of him. Uh, his name is Michael uh, Wiesner, or Wiesner, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. He's German, but he does these great, excellent English language run-throughs, just like I do. Um, there's a link to his show, or his uh, YouTube page, YouTube channel, on, the, on my video right now if you want to go check him out. I love Michael's work, absolutely one of my favorite guys and yeah you know, I knew he wanted to cover Caverna he knew I want or my my backers wanted me to cover Caverna so we talked about it and we decided since I could get my video out first I'm a little bit faster than him because he's very professional and like me I'm very uh, sloppy uh, so I could get mine out first and I would cover the basic game and so if you're just want to know about the how the game flows what's new what's changed from Aglica, Agricola you can definitely watch this and um, have a good time and learn all you need to know if you really want to know how the the advanced version works, wait a few days and his video will be up. And by the way, you know, there'll be links to my video on his and his video on mine because we're basically coordinated. Or watch both our videos, what I would recommend, and watch mine now and watch his later and you could get the entire experience and you'll know everything there is in this crazy, thick, heavy box. Um, anyway, so enough of the caveats out of the way, let's get going. Now, this is a worker placement game just like Agricola. At the beginning of the game, I've got two workers, Ma and Pa Dwarf, living here in their little cave, in their entry-level dwelling, where I've got room for two dwarves and a pair of animals. You can see this little pen in case I needed to put some sheep or something in here. I've got some room for them. I've also got one empty chamber, which is a space that I could build another one. You know, I could build a, a blacksmith, or I could build the breakfast room. And if I build any of these, they give me different abilities. These types of rooms, the ones in this orange section, they expand my house. So I've got more room so I can have babies and basically get more workers. These ones over here, this treasure chest means these are kind of special ones. They do all kinds of weird things. These ones, this resource thing means all of these help me be better at resource gathering. Stone and wood and ore and stuff. These ones help me better be, be better at generating food, which is hugely important because you've got to feed your family. These ones help me, these four help me with food and also give me in-game victory point conditions. And then these ones, all eight of these are all about in-game victories. If I build, say, the ore storage, that means at the end of the game, I get victory points, one for every two ore I've got. Or if I build weapon storage, I get you know three victory points for every weapon I've built. 
etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, now at the beginning of the game, we do not have the resources we need. I, if I wanted, I don't have the one wood and two stone I would need to build or storage. So I can't build any of these right now, but in the back of my mind, I've always got to bear in mind. And now, the, like I said, the only difference between the basic game and the uh, full game is imagine there were twice as many tiles here, all of them available, and it's just like this big wall of, oh my God, choices. So I'm just keeping it a little bit simpler. By the way, I'll talk a little bit more about the differences in the uh, final thoughts. But anyway, this is a situation, we've got all these things we can build, we've got one place we can build them. I've got this forest I could clear cut to make room for farmland and animal pens and stuff like that. I've got this, this mountain this, that I could excavate and tunnel to make place for mines and, and more rooms so I could expand my household. Right, and I've got two workers and, it's, and I'm the first player and I start with one food, as does Jen. A subtle thing, but in a two-player game in regular Agricola, the second player starts with two food. Not in Caverna. Everybody starts with one food. So, I'm going to send Pa. I'm going to tell him to do an action. And these are all the actions I have to choose from. So, I could... Oops, why is there wood on here? There should not be wood there. Oh, whoops, the wood should be over here. I could go logging and collect three wood. I could go mining or excavating and collect some stone and actually excavate some of my um, area. I could go ore mining and get some ore. I could just collect supplies and get a whole bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff I could do. But what I think I'm going to do is, me as a player, I'm going to focus on my strategy around trying to become a great adventurer because that's probably the biggest new feature in the game. That you can give your workers weapons. And then they can go on expeditions and find loot and bring it back and help them run their farm. So I'm going to try and make a strategy out of that. And to do that, I need to forge a weapon, one of these weapons up here. And to forge the weapon, I need ore. And so I could just go ore mining right now someplace and pick up these two ore. But I think I want to be a little bit better about my ore. I want to get my own ore mine. Because if I have my ore mine, I get three ore, and whenever I try to do ore in the future, I get more ore. So, I want to build an ore mine. But to be able to construct an ore mine, I need to have two empty tunnels. You can see, this is an ore mine being put on top of two empty tunnels. So, I want to get some tunnels. And I don't have any tunnels yet. I'm going to get some tunnels over here. So, my first action is, I'm going to go do some drift mining. Okay, and now... First of all, the stone that accumulates here, every, every round a new, another stone accumulates here, that's what this little arrow means. I get to take the stone, and now, and or, so I get to do both, I get to take one of these tiles. So I took the stone, and instead of or, I'm going to take one of these tiles. So I'll take this tile, and I can place it. Now, it has to expand, for, so I can put it here, here, or here. Any of the, I can't, you know, I can't go diagonally, all that. And I could, you know, I could put it like this, or like this. I think... I'm going to, we'll see, now if I built it here, I would cover the space up and I would happen to find a little cache of food. You know, it's like a food source, some mushrooms or something growing. And so I get some more food. But I want to build up towards this because there's two food waiting for me up there in that little lake. So I'm going to build like this. And now I've got two chambers that I could convert into rooms. And I've got the first of two tunnels I need to do ore mining construction. So that was my first move. Now, Jen. She's going to do a move. She is not going to go the adventurer path. She's going to kind of go more the traditional agricola path and focus on, you know, expanding her farmstead, getting animals, getting, li you know, livestock and crops and stuff like that. So, and with that in mind, she's going to go for that classic agricola opener. Everybody knows out there, grab the three wood. Boom. She's grabbing three wood. Okay. Now I get one more action. I'm going to do the other underground. I'm going to do excavation now, which means I get another stone. And now I have a choice. I could take, well, I could take either this, what I did before, or I could take this. And it's my choice. You can see I have a choice. The other one, I didn't have a choice. Here I have a choice of what I want to do. Now, I could give myself, say, and now I have four places that I could build rooms. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this because, remember, I want to have two tunnels next to each other so I can make an ore mine. So I'm going to build it like this, and now I've built all the way out here, I have found the big cache of fish, I guess. And now the lake is empty, but I found a bunch of food, which I'll be able to feed my family with later. And I have set myself up so that next round, I'll be able to make an ore mine there. Okay, so that was my second and last move. And now Jen, now of course, you know, obviously you can't go to any of the places I've already gone. Jen's going to do one more thing. Let's see. I'm starting player. She could grab starting player, and it would get her a food, and it would get her two ore. That's nice. Now, she'd like to go ruby mining. Rubies are awesome. That's another really big new feature of the game. It's this wild card resource called rubies, which you can trade in for a ton of stuff. Very powerful. They really mix up the game quite a bit. 
But in a, it's a special rule in a two player game, rubies don't come out until the third round. So that's why this marker's here. So Jen's not gonna go rubying. She could get some more wood. She could start trying to clear some land out of her forest and get some extra benefits. But I think she's just gonna get some supplies. She's just gonna be um, hunting and ga or gathering right now. Cause look at this, look at all this stuff. She gets a wood, a stone, uh, uh, an ore, a food, and two gold. So she's gonna get another wood, a stone, an ore, oops, sorry. A wood, a stone, an ore, two bucks, and a food. So at the end of her first round, the, you know, the first season, I guess, she gathered a lot of resources. She's got a lot of stuff, including two gold. Now gold is points. These are straight up victory points. Every time you come here, basically, you earn victory points for the end of the game. However, some buildings will let you do stuff with gold. None in the basic, but I think there's some advanced buildings that let you do stuff with gold. But gold, in a pinch, can also be used to buy food if you're desperate and you don't want to starve or you know have to go begging. So anyway, so Jen, she just, on her first season, she got a lot of stuff. My first season, I did a lot of digging. All right. It's the end of the first round. Our workers come home. Agricola fans know this. A new action becomes available. And you'll notice there's no harvest. And it's sheep farming. Sheep farming is now a possibility in addition to everything else we could do. And before we start placing workers again, we refill. Every place where there's one of these little arrows means we refill that. So um, I have to put a stone over here and I have to put a stone over here. I have to put another food. So food starts building up on this space, making it more and more attractive. Rubies would build up. Remember, rubies don't enter the game in, in a two player game until the third round. No arrow here, so nothing builds up. All right, um, three, more law, three more wood comes out here. Um, oops, where are they? One, two, three. Nothing fills up here. That's always that's always a set. You always get the same thing. Um, one more ore comes out. Now this is kind of special. If this space were empty, two ore would come out. But since it's not empty, only one additional. So there's a there's a burst and then it, it slows down. Uh, there's no arrows here. Um, a sheep. The first sheep of the game starts to accumulate. More wood. Wood gathering is basically the poor man's logging. Over nobody wants to go there first, but over time a lot of wood will build up and then it becomes attractive. Clearing, more wood comes here. Sustenance, oh whoops, there should have been a food. I missed this, La at the first turn there should have been a food here and now for the second round, there's another food and then nothing fills up there. Okay, so, and you know, that looks like it's a lot of fiddly stuff but it goes very fast when all the players are working together to make that happen. Okay, so anyway, I am still first player because Jen did not take the starting player marker for me, I get to go again. And now, remember I was doing all this stuff Last turn, I am going to do, I'm gonna do ore mine construction, boom. And so if we zoom in, I get to place an ore mine on two empty tunnels and I get three ore and then I could go on an adventure. Or alternatively, if I, if I didn't wanna do this or I couldn't because my, my cave is full, I could still go on an adventure. However, I can't go on an adventure until I've got a weapon. So, that'll, I, so unfortunately, I can't use the second half of this, but I am gonna use the first half. I'm gonna make an ore mine. Because remember, I made these two empty tunnels. I can now replace them with an ore mine and that gave me three victory points. Also, that means from now on, whenever I go ore mining, I get additional, I get more ore. And remember, um, when I built this ore mine, I got three ore. One, two, three. And this is all gonna pay off for me very soon. So I, my first action was I did ore mine construction and I got some ore and I got three victory points. Okay, that was my first action. Jen's action. Let's see here. Now, now see, she's thinking, um, on the fourth round, guaranteed, um, you know, there, there, Oh, there's a lot of randomness to the order of these, these special action cards come out, but in the fourth round, it's always gonna be family growth or what's called wishing for children because this is a magic fantasy realm. Um, you know, basically, how are children born? Oh, they wish for it. That's how dwarves reproduce. They, they do wishes. So on the fourth turn, we'll be able to start wishing for children, but you can't unless you've got more room. You see, in this starting room, there's only room for two dwarves. We would need to put a dwelling here before we'd have room for a baby. And Jen, I think she's really interested in that. She wants to get a dwelling down so that when the fourth round comes around, she can get another worker. So, but if we go over here, the dwellings cost. This one costs three wood and three stone um, and is worth no victory points. This one is four wood and two stone and no victory points, but the best one, there's a bunch of these, four wood and three stone and it's worth three victory points. So now Jen's gonna wanna do that, but I think she wants to save up and get some stone. She needs two more stone and then she'd have enough to build that nice dwelling. 
Now she comes here, she'll only get one stone. She comes here, she'll get one stone. So she's gonna wait and hope that next round, the stone will have built up a bit more. So that means the next turn, she's hoping to get some stone and then all combined, build the dwelling so she'll be able to make a family member. But in the meantime, what does she wanna do this round? I think she is going to start working on clear cutting this forest. That's her focus. She's got three ways to do it. She could do clearing, which will let her get some more wood. And you can see it's built up a little bit now. And um, you know, clear some forest. She could go sustenance, which gives her some food, some wheat she could plant and lets her clear a forest. Or she could slash and burn, which lets her clear the forest and lets her plant her crops. So the nice thing is if she does this first to get some crops, then she could do this later and plant those crops. Or she could do this and get some more wood so that she'd be able to build more good stuff. All valid choices. Which one is she gonna do? I think she's gonna do this one. She's gonna go for the sustenance. She's got two food, and now that means she's got enough food to feed her family at the end of the third season when harvest comes. So she did that. She also gets one wheat that she'll be able to plant later, and she gets to Take one of these tiles, and she can, now it has to expand from her start. You can see this is a little entrance to her house. They even there's a space where they put their little feet, their, their little shoes out before they go in, because they're very clean and tidy dwarfs. So she can expand, she can put this like this, or like this, or alternatively, like this, or like this. And I think she's gonna expand like this, because it means she'll expand out here, and she'll find some berries. So one time bonus, she'll get some berries out in the forest, and I think she'll go like this. So now she's got a field where she could plant crops, and she's got a, uh, this is a field, and this is, I forget what's called, a meadow, where she can't do anything with it right yet, but she will be able to do stuff with it. But in the meadow, she found some berries, so she's got some more food for her family. Okay, that was her first action. Oops, why do I have, oopsie. Right, now my second action. Okay, my second action now. Well, interestingly, I think my second, I could go and do ore mining now, because I'd get three more ore, plus, since I have a mine, for every ore mine I get, I'd get two more, so I'd get five ore. That means I'd get five plus I'd have eight ore. So that means when I eventually build a weapon, it could be a mighty level eight weapon. I could be super powerful. That's very cool. I'm tempted to do that. But if I wait, next round another ore, you know, next round another ore will come out and I'll get even more ore. But no, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm my, my, last, my last action. Wait, no, what am I talking about? Yes, oh yeah, my last action, I'm gonna get the ore. So I take three that had built up, plus two more, because I have an ore mine. So I've got eight ore now. I'm gonna be a great and mighty adventurer next round. And now Jen, she's got one more action. Now, I think she wants to continue to slash and burn in her forest here. And you know, if she slash and burns, you know, if, she, if she clears out this forest, she'll find a wild hog that she has room for in her house. She could, she could get that hog, that'd be nice. And you can see there's another one up here too. If she finds both of them, they could start breeding, and she could get you know, a hog economy going on, which is very, very nice. So I think, does she want to take one of these other acts? She gets some more wood, and you know, clear out some more forest, or she got some more forest, and she could plant this wheat and start harvesting wheat. That's very nice, too. Oh, so many choices. I think, I think she's gonna do this one. She wants, to start, she wants to start planting right away. So she gets to place another one down and she'll place it like this. And so that means, as you can see, she's found her hog. And where's the hogs? Right, so she now has a pet hog who lives inside with them. That's adorable. And she's also placed it like this because, I mean, she could have done it either way. She could have expanded anywhere if she wanted. She's not like this because having two meadows side by side means later on they can be upgraded into a pasture, as you can see. Later on, she'd be able to upgrade this into a pasture. It's the same way I had the two tunnels and I upgraded them into an ore mine. Having two meadows can be upgraded into a pasture, which is worth four points. So that's why she has built with these two in, like that. There's no equivalent for that, um, like that for fields. Fields can just get spread all around. Unlike Agricola, in Agricola, fields have to be always connected. In, in Caverna, they don't. Anyway, so Jen has done this. Slash and burn, and now she can sow up to two grain. And this is another thing, I um, mean, agricola you could do as much as you got, but you're limited. You can only do two grain and two vegetable. So Jen's gonna do her one grain, she's gonna plant it in this field over here. And planting means you, pl you place one and two more get created. And so now, over time, she will start harvesting this, and it becomes a food source for her, a, a, you know, an, an income source for her. Right, so those are Jen's two actions. We're done, bring our workers home. 
oops, I put Jen's workers in my cow cavern, and there's still enough room for their pet hog. And so now at the end of the second season, I have done more mining and I've got a lot of ore. Jen, Jen's second season, she has cleared the forest a bit and she started planting crops. Now, we move on to the third season and it is gonna be blacksmithing. This is what I was waiting for. This means I could make a weapon for myself and go on adventures. Jen, she would need ore to do it. She's got some ore, she could do it if she wanted. Also, now that we're on the third turn, rubies enter the game. So, remember I gotta refill, so let's just start refilling. Rubies, refill, so there's a ruby, there's the first one. Another food comes out over here, making this even more attractive. Now there's, uh, you get start player, three food and two ore. This is becoming better and better. Some stone starts building up, and that's what Jen was hoping for, that she'd be able to get some more stone on a, on a big turn. Let's see, coming over here. Now remember, when uh, since nobody took this three wood, only a single one comes out now. Nothing comes out there. Two ore comes out. Nothing there. Oh, another sheep comes out. Sheep are starting to build up. Nothing comes out there, nothing comes out there. Uh, a food comes out here. Another wood comes out there. And another wood comes out there. And so you can see, sooner or later, wood gathering is gonna be exciting, you know. But you can imagine, I mean, it, nobody comes here until like four or five wood have built up. All right, so we're ready again. Jen still hasn't taken first player, so I'm still first player. And now it's my turn. And now, at the end of this round, it's gonna be a harvest. We have to feed. For every family member we have, we need two food. Now, I've only got three food. I'm gonna need at least one more food, or my family will go hungry and I'll have to beg, and that makes me lose points. But I think, I'm not too worried about it because when I go on my adventure, I will find some food. And, now here's the thing. I only have two actions. I could go right to the blacksmith, get my weapon. But see, I gotta assume that Jen is not gonna, I gotta get to do two actions. And if I go here, then I get to do another action. I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't do this first because Jen has not tried to get a lot of ore. She's got one ore, but I could bet that she's probably not gonna do this. She's probably gonna focus on something else. So chances are, I wanna try to grab something else before she grabs it. Like for instance, um, you know, Jen might be trying to make a, um, a meadow here so that she could um, get those sheep. So maybe I want to grab these sheep first and convert them into food. Because that would be a way to, I mean, these sheep, it's just food just waiting for me to grab. Uh, that's another difference from Agricola, by the way. You can always convert food anytime you want. You don't need ovens and stoves and special actions. You can always just convert food. Getting food is, on the whole, much easier. But you have to get a lot more because there's a lot more harvest. Sorry, that was an Agricola reference. Um, anyway, so what do I want to do? There's a lot of wood that's built. Oh, and this is interesting. Oh. Ah. See, the interesting thing is when you go logging, if you, if you send and it, somebody who has a weapon, not only do you go logging, they have a little adventure in the woods. But I haven't gotten a weapon yet. I know my second action is I'm going to want to get a weapon and go on an adventure. What's my first action going to be? I can't do another mine construction until I make some more tunnels. I could just start making more tunnels so I can make more ore. But you know what? I am also concerned. I want to be able to get um, family growth too. And I've got two stone, which is enough to, buy, to like build this cheaper dwelling. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I, let's see, if I grab four wood from here, I'd have enough wood. Oh, but interestingly, so if I grab four wood, I'd have enough to build this dwelling or this dwelling. This dwelling only needs three wood. So I could grab here, and I could grab three wood, but it would also mean I'd get to start clearing out my farmland, which is nice. But then that means I'm going for the simple dwelling, which won't give me victory points, as opposed to the real dwelling. So that's a tough choice. Do I want to get more wood, but I won't benefit from the adventure because I don't have a weapon yet? Or do I want to get less wood, but get two actions out of it? I think that's more attractive to me. So I'm going to, go to, I'm going to do some clearing. I picked up three wood. And so you can see, I've got three wood Oh, oh shoot, shoot. Actually, I, wait a minute, hold on, let's think. I didn't think of that. Let's see, because if I get the four wood, I could build a dwelling right now. That's pretty cool. Yes, I'm gonna go logging. I'm gonna get four wood, and unfortunately, I don't get to do the adventure, but I've now got four wood and two stone, which means I could build my simple dwelling. You okay, honey? Yeah. I just heard something crash, but she's okay, folks, don't worry. But here's the thing. Now I could build my dwelling. I could go to, where is it? Housework, which is where you build dwellings. You could furnish a cavern and I'd get a pet dog, which would be very nice too. So I could do that, but then I wouldn't be blacksmithing, which I need my weapon. Ah, so you know what? Since I can't build the room right now anyway, I'm gonna stick with the original plan. I'm gonna get three wood 
and I'm going to clear cut. And that means next round, I'll work on a dwelling. So I get to clear cut and like Jen. Now, and you can see, if I go like this, I'll get the fourth food I need and I'll have all my food needs covered. So I'm going to come here and we'll I'll do the same as Jen. I'll set it up so that I could make a meadow here. Um, or, you know, instead I could build up this way and start trying to build towards this, but I really want that food. So I built there, I've gotten my food, all my food needs are, are met, and I got three wood, so in the future I'll be able to build a dwelling and expand my family. All right, that was my first action. Jen's first action. She is going to, she's already got the wood she needs, she's going to get some stone. And she can go drift mining or except either way she'll get to stone. I think she'll come to this one because it gives her the option of either building a double chamber or a chamber hallway. So she gets two stone and she has a choice. Chamber hallway or double chamber. Um, she's gonna stay away from ore. She doesn't really care about getting ore. She cares more about getting more room. So she's gonna take the double room. And she'll put it like this, which means she gets another food because she found some underground mushrooms. So now she's got three places that she could build rooms. And she's got the resources to build a room too. All right, so that was Jen's first move. My next move and my last move, the year is almost up. We are finished the last season, it's the last year. Time to blacksmith. Okay, as you can see, I can give up one to eight ore to make a level one to eight weapon, my choice. I've got eight ore, because I worked hard at it. I'm gonna give up all my ore, all of it. I'm not gonna save any of it, because it could be used for other stuff, like ore is necessary to build the stubble room, or stone storage, um, you know, or I might save ore so I could build another weapon for my other family member, but I'm just gonna go all in, and I'm gonna forge the, gr the best weapon I can, a level eight weapon. And now this gets bonded. The rules actually talk about how a, a dwarf will never lose their sword. So this, this dwarf now, let's say it's Ma Dwarf, Mabel. Mabel here, she is, has a weapon and she is a mighty adventurer. And you notice there's two. Not only do you blacksmith, she gets to go on an adventure now. And or she gets to go on an adventure and so she will. Now this is, she has a level eight weapon and it's a level three adventurer. What, uh, you know, uh, expedition, sorry, expedition. What that means is, since it's level three, she gets to collect three pieces of loot. And because her sword is so strong, it can be, you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She can pick up three of any of these things from her expedition. She has a lot of options here. Very, very nice. Right, okay. So, yeah, this actually worked out pretty nice. Um, I get to take three things, and it, now I can't take the same thing. So I, I can't like get um, you know two ore, two ore, and two ore. I can't get six ore out of this, which would be nice because then I could forge a level six sword for my other. But I can I can take any of these. So first of all, since I've, I'm up really high, I think I am going to build a um, what do you call it? A what is this? This is I'm going to furnish a cavern. Normally to do it, I'd have to come over here and use a worker, but I get to do it here. And by the way, there's in the rules there's actually some very cute thematic reasons. What is this? Furnish a cavern. The reason I'm furnishing a cavern is, um, where is it? Be, uh, because you don't want to live like a troll under a bridge, you don't forget to bring some furniture home from time to time. Better to have lousy paintings on a wall than a fight with a wife. So when I went out on my expedition, I brought back some furniture to, uh, so it's really kind of a shopping expedition. But anyway, so my first of my three things I'm taking is I'm bringing some furniture back to furnish one of my three rooms. And what am I gonna furnish it with? Remember, I got all these Oh, shoot. Now I'm regretting it. If I had actually taken the four wood, I'd have four wood and two stone. I could build this dwelling, but I took three wood so I could clear, which is how I got my food. Ah, okay. So I can't build a dwelling right now because I would need three stone. I've only got two. Oh, but wait, oh, but wait, oh, but wait. Remember. Okay. The first thing I'm bringing back is a stone. I'm bringing back a stone. The second thing I'm bringing back is some furniture. So that means I can afford um, this simple dwelling because it I, when I went out, I found these furniture. It cost me three wood and three stone. Oh, wait, I forget. Is there a rule? I don't remember. I don't remember if the if rules say this or not. If I can use the stuff I picked up to pick up other stuff. Oh, shoot. Like I said, I'm very new to this game. Let's just check the rules really quick, shall we? On the big pile of five billion um, punch boards that this game comes with. Let's see, adventures, adve expeditions. Um, to, at the end of expedition, yeah, each, uh, 
When choosing items from the list, you may only choose items with the minimum strength. Um, but by, uh, at the end of the expedition, web strength. All right, okay, actually, oh, I bet you it'll say in the appendix, right? Um, oops, it's on the first page. With weapon strength seven or more, you may carry out, you may have to pay the furnishing cost to you. You may build any of the available furnishing inventory. Okay, now it didn't say I couldn't use the stuff. So that means I think, that means I, when I went out, I found some stone. So I think I, it means I can. I am gonna build this dwelling. And it takes all my stone and all my wood. So this is the second of three things I found on my expedition. And it is a simple dwelling, which means I've got room to have a baby next season. Okay, and I've still got one more thing. The best thing I could do, normally it costs a stone to build a stable. But I could build that stable now for free. Or I could take two victory points. Or I could start getting ore. Or I could get a pet donkey that I could put in my ore mine. Or I could get a sheep. Or I could get a dog. But, you know, I mean, I don't think I want to get one of the lower level things. I definitely want to get a higher level thing because I'm so high level. So I think my last thing is I will. Yes, I will. Um, what do you call it? I'll build a stable. And now I can't, I can't build the stable. I can build it on any outside space except for fields. So I can build it on the meadow or I can build it in any of these forests. I'm going to build it up here um, in, in this space. Where, well, because what happens is uh, there's a new thing for stables, not in Agricola. If you build a stable in a forest, it can hold one wild pig. So if I ever find a wild pig, I could put it in this stable. Jen, she had to move her wild pig into the home. I could put it out here in the forest. Okay. Or maybe I want to put it out here because then that means it would be in this meadow. And then, you know, eventually I'll have a double meadow. Yeah, I guess I'll put it here. Eventually I'll, I'll probably go for a double meadow like Jen did and turn it into a double, what do you call it, um... Pasture and all that. Okay, so I, I built that for free. So those are my three things. I brought back home a stable. I brought back some stone, which I used, and I brought back some furniture. I'm not sure if I can do that. I might be cheating. If so, I'll put a note on the screen here that said I could not use this to do this. I'm not sure, but anyway, if, if so, ah, for you know, forgive me. I'll put a note. Anyway, though, so that was my big adventure. I brought back three pieces of loot. Now, also, every time you go on an adventure, as a free bonus, that character gets to level up. So I've gone from a level eight, the way I started. Where, come on, where's the nines? Um, eight, sixes, I see a lot of sixes. Here we go. I've upgraded from a level eight to a level nine. So in the future, if that person, if that dwarf goes on adventures, they can start, it lets me build tunnels for free. So very powerful to be a high level adventurer because you can see I could do, you know, when I blacksmith, I could adventure. When I go logging, I could adventure. When I do mine construction, I could go on adventures. And more and more opportunities for adventures come up in the later rounds. Okay, so that was my last move. And now Jen's last move, and now it's interesting. See, Jen had originally assumed she, she has everything. Her last move was gonna be, she was gonna do some housework and lets her furnish that cavern. And she was going to, she had the goods to build a dwelling. But now she sees I built a dwelling, so she knows that I will get the worker placement. I'll get, the, I'll get to have a baby before her because I'm still first player. So that has made a, a, a change in Jen's plans. She is gonna grab starting player, which means she gets three food, has been building up for a while. She's got a lot of food. She also gets two ore. So maybe she'll wanna make, create an adventure as well now that she can make a level three sword. And she gets first player, which will hamper my plans next round. But anyway, as you can see, at the end of the third season, it is harvest time. Harvest time, it's very simple. It's on the back of this card. First thing, we um, harvest. We can take one, and so I don't have any crops, but Jen does. She gets to take a crop, and so now she could plant this again later, or she could eat it, because you can convert wheat into food. And that's all the harvesting. Then we feed every worker, and let's see, our workers come home. Jen's workers are home. My workers are home. Okay, my workers are home, Jen's workers are home. And now we have to feed them. I have to give up two food for my two workers, so all my food is gone. Oops, there goes my food. And Jen, she has a lot of food, so she'll have plenty of leftover for the end of, for the next harvest. One, two, three, four, and Jen's still got lots of food left over. I'm completely broke, but I've got a very mighty warrior. Jen, she's got tons of resources. All right, so we fed. If we had any babies, they'd cost one. And now finally there's breeding. However, neither of us got any livestock. There's all these sheep here. They could have bred. Now this pig would like to breed, but he's kind of lonely, so he doesn't get to breed either. So we skip the breeding phase. That is the end of the first year. 
all the workers come home, a, and now in the new year, we can see um, wishing for children comes up. And there won't be a regular harvest, there'll just be a, a small feeding at the end of this round. And now, like always, stuff comes back out, the things refill, a lot of stone is filling up there. A little bit of stone, food starts to rebuild here. There's two rubies, somebody's gonna grab this because those rubies are so valuable. Um, let's see, nothing fills up there. A third sheep, look at all these sheep. Another ore, another wood, a lot of wood over here. Another wood, a single wood, another food, and there we go. And 35 minutes, I have finished the first year. As you can see, it continues. More and more opportunities come out, more and more actions. We start getting additional workers, so we start doing more stuff. We fill up more space. We start building more buildings that give us special abilities, that give us end goals to shoot for. A ton of stuff is yet to come. And if you would like to see more, you can hit the button that's on screen right now for the extended playthrough. Alternatively, you can hit the other button and go right to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one. Did it stop recording? No, it didn't. Oops, it's the wrong button.